Hi everyone, uh, I'm Oz, Oz Günenç. Uh, today I'm going to talk about life, uh, art as a life enhancing moment. Julian Baghini said, not so long ago, high art was the preserve of the wealthy. Chamber music was performed in the private homes of the rich, where guests could also admire the fine paintings on the walls, glass and ceramics in cabinets. Yes, there have been public theaters and opera houses for a long time, but the cost and the social codes that require formal dress kept hoi polloi safely outside. Hoi polloi is an expression from Greek that means the many or in the strictest form, the people. In English, it has been given a negative connotation to signify the masses. Julian Baghini also stated that, due to the dress code, many people refrain from attending royal opera houses, concerts for the fear of standing out. The formal dress code keeps common people out safely from the rich. But what happens when there is a public occasion? I vividly remember my enthusiasm of attending the King Tutankhamun's artifacts in Fort Lauderdale in 2006, January. I was there at 8.30 a.m. And to my dismay, the ticket I bought uh, for, a, for a high amount of money, actually, said that my visit time would be at 2 p.m. So, and, and I was given a 90-minute visit time. Spending my time at the beach and waiting for the time to be accepted in the, into the museum, I was having lucid dreams of spending enough time in front of each artifact. But, but this is a very big but, you could guess my disappointment when I found myself struggling with the crowd inside the museum. Imagine, today, finding the time and money to travel just in time to visit King Tut's treasures on the world tour before, it was, before returning to Egypt. And you find yourself blending in with the crowd, struggling to see and enjoy these artifacts. Was this the case for the rich and the privileged? I don't think so, because they were able to visit the Fort Lauderdale Science Museum a day before it is opened for the public. At the opening of my speech, I mentioned that art was reserved for the rich. In the past, and in today's world, if you could afford time and money, you could visit any museum in the world. But would you enjoy it as much as those rich and privileged people? The sole reason for visiting art museums is that they are life-enhancing moments for me. I accept that there are other life-enhancing moments, such as eating premium chocolate, or dining at a fine dining restaurant, or owning a sports car, or having a nice house in a highly residential neighborhood. They are high moments, but they don't make you feel better and privileged as attending an art museum. Let me take you to Dallas Art Museum. I once attended the Dallas Art Museum and came across two paintings by Winston Churchill. Nothing, but nothing could take away the pleasure of having such rare moments in your life. And at those moments, you start to understand the term, life is a work of art. Today, I would like to talk about conceptual art, because in my opinion, this notion 
opened the way for the public art. It all started with Marcel Duchamp, perhaps the, the first great work of conceptual art was a man's porcelain urinal, which Duchamp submitted to an art exhibition for the Society of Independent Artists and displayed it upside down and signed with the pseudonym R. Mott. This was, this was considered one of the first so-called anti-artists and Duchamp wanted to produce an artwork that wasn't meant to please the eye, but instead serve the mind. This was difficult for many, and discussions went on for years. What makes an artwork valuable is the question, and an artist such as Duchamp himself could claim that this ready-made object is an artwork itself because he has the authority to do so. After 90 years, a Turkish artist, Bedri Baykam, uh, opened a new exhibition in New York City. He installed seven double-sided empty frames hanging from the ceiling in the Proposition Gallery in New York. He said, these frames were not empty, but rather framed lifetime and space. The artist asserted that framing lifetime and space creates a phenomenal situation. The outer limit where realism, 3D, and conceptual art meet. He believes that this exhibition will forever alter the 100-year-long obsessive relationship of generations of artists with the object originated by Duchamp's ready-made. Pedri Baikam says, here, the master of the situation is the active space, as followed by the viewer. The key role given to the object, the ready-made, has shifted away. It brings together the rectangle plane of the artwork with conceptual art. Just as the, re the ready-made has taught us to read the object and look at them differently, these pieces enable us to look at life space differently and all the frontiers between life and art blow up. Those empty frames, in fact, are not empty at all. They are filled with zillion different images as the viewer strolls 360 degrees in front of them. Nobody sees exactly the same image, which is live and changing every second. It is an image fabricator at any instant. After seeing those, those three frames, through those frames, I could understand the title better. Life is a work of art. Then, recently, an Italian artist came up with another conceptual artwork. Some of you may find the idea shocking or thought-provoking. Perhaps, I don't know, Salvatore Garau. He claimed that conceptual art is not meant to be looked at aesthetically, but to be taught about intellectually. He created a sculpture made out of spirit and imagination. Let's watch a video showing his sculpture in Milano. It is called Buddha in Contemplation.
Can you see the sculpture? It is in your imagination. So, the lucky buyer went home with a certificate of authenticity and a set of instructions. The work per grau must be exhibited in a private home in a roughly 5 by 5 foot space, free of obstruction. So he says, when I decide to exhibit an immaterial sculpture in a given space, that space will concentrate a certain amount of and density of toads at a precise point, creating a sculpture that, from my title, will only take the most varied forms. The artist went on. From conceptual art, we could move to AI and data paintings. Refik Anadol, a Turkish-American artist. We just watched his TED talk right at the beginning of this speech. And Refik Anadol has created magnificent art shows for the public. And the way AI creates art enables us to see the future in art. Art will be part of our lives in the future. Let's take a look at Refik Anadol's work. Buona nit. Benvinguts a la casa del lloc. El lloc on tots els somnis són possibles. L'espectacle és a punt de començar. Avui celebrem moltes coses. 20 anys obers al món. Més de 20 milions de persones han visitat aquest patrimoni mundial. Mirem al futur, com hauria fet Antoni Gaudí, perquè connectem amb la innovació. I per últim, perquè tornem a estar junts, compartint després de tant de temps. Gràcies per ser aquí. La Casa Valló, com a institució privada, us regala avui, en primícia, per a vosaltres, aquest màping únic. Una obra d'art creada pel millor artista digital del món, Refi Canadol. Senyores i senyors, nens i nenes, obriu els ulls. I el més important, guardeu aquest moment a la memòria. Good evening. Welcome to Casa Batlló, the place where all dreams are possible. The show is about to start. Today we celebrate many things. 20 years of into the wall. As you can see, this is Casa Batlló, Gaudí's design. Refik Anadol and his team used climate data from the city collected in real time and showed ephemeris being celebrated on the building's facade. The work was sold at Christie's 21st century evening sale on May 10th, with 10% of the proceeds donated to institutions that work with neurodiverse adults and children. On May 7, 2022, Anadol and his team projected a mapping version of the piece on the facade of Casabattio before nearly 50,000 attendees. That's why I call this public art. The digital piece was also on public view at Rockefeller Plaza in Manhattan, New York. The process for this multi-layered project began when Anadol created the first AI-based immersive room in 2021 in the mind of Gaudi, a six-sided lead cube room inside Casa Battio. For this 360 degrees experience, Anadol collected a data set of approximately a million images, consisting of Gaudi's sketches, visual archives of the building's history, academic archives, and publicly available photos of Casa Battio found on various internet and social media platforms. The second work for that Refik Anadol presented was on the Dong Damun Design Plaza in Seoul, Korea, South Korea. The architect is Zaha Hadid. And the structure gives you the impression that uh, it came from the future. Building uh, using this uh, architect's uh, 
building as canvas, the performance collaborated with the mind of a machine to unearth the materiality of the structure and explore the architecture of memory itself. Upon unveiling DDP's architectural form, the building set the stage for the exploration of a new kind of topographic memory. So, <laughs> choreographing this piece began by collecting 11 millions of public data from the city in the form of the citizens' stories. These visual stories come in the form of archival and personal photographs and documents, individual and communal narratives that offer a window into the past and hopes for the future. Upon synthesizing those memories, alternate realities of soul were imagined, revealing the collective consciousness of the city based on the interconnectedness of those individual ones. From this public show to a single banana taped on the wall, life is truly a work of art. It surprises us every day. Anything can be a work of art, depending on what the viewer sees in them, the context it is presented. Final words. If life is a work of art, where do women stand in the art world? Whenever I visit a museum, I'm surrounded by female figures, either in sculptures or paintings. Seeing the sheer amount of women being portrayed in art pieces inspires everyone to be an artist. However, we need to be careful about the male gaze here. The Guerrilla Girls, a feminist artist collective formed in New York City in 1985, are known for using humor and satire in their work to highlight discrimination and inequality in the art world. And they maintain their anonymity by wearing gorilla masks in public. According to them, less than 5% of the artists in the Metropolitan Museum in New York are women, but 85% of the nudes are female. So they have a fair point in asking. Do women have to be naked to get into the Met Museum? According to Andy Warhol, a Coke is a Coke, but and no amount of money uh, can get you a better Coke than the one on the bum on the corner is drinking. Can we have the same view on a piece of art? Thank you for listening. <laughs>